Can you imagine a world without fossil fuels? We might not go around thinking about this, but it's an interesting thought. What should we then use as energy for transport, for power and for heating? Uh, we see here uh, the extent of the fossil energy production in the world for one year. And this unit, MTO, is the energy equivalent of a million tons of oil, which is a staggeringly large unit. Now, fossil fuels are not renewable energy sources, and the use of them produce CO2 and other climate gases. And at the moment, our energy supply is from burning things we find in the ground, and that's really not sustainable in the long run. Now, let's compare the fossil energy production to the renewable energy production. As you can see, the amount of renewable energy production in the world is very low compared to the non-renewable energy, and especially fossil fuel, even though the production of renewable energy is increasing. Now, since the world's energy demand is also increasing, we still have a long way to go to be able to make the world independent of fossil fuels. The world is now trying to find alternatives for these fossil fuels, and the most likely solution is renewable electricity, and that is electricity from solar, wind, tide, and many other sources. Now, these are great sources for producing electricity, but we need to be able to transport and store our energy in a practical way. And the promising solution to store and transport electrical energy is by making hydrogen from electricity and water. Now, hydrogen can be stored as a gas or a liquid, and when you use that to produce electricity in the fuel cell, for the power, uh, exhaust is only pure water. Now, several local and national governments are now seeing if this can be one of the solutions to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels. And hydrogen from renewable electricity really is a great solution for decarbonization. We can fill our cars, our ships, planes or trains just like with petroleum fuel, and the cost will probably not be significantly higher. And this is the part that we can call the hydrogen economy. But what I really want to talk about is hydrogen safety. One challenge of introducing hydrogen for fuel is that hydrogen is a combustible gas. Now, hydrogen is safe as long as it's contained in tanks or in equipment. But if an accidental release of hydrogen from failing equipment, we lose containment. And released hydrogen can form explosive clouds if mixed with air. Hydrogen is also very reactive, so that the potential explosion can be quite severe. However, this chemical property that makes hydrogen <coughs> this re reactive also makes it a great fuel. For a new fuel to get public acceptance, the risk of using the fuel will need to be as low or lower as for a traditional alternative. Since hydrogen behaves very differently than, for instance, gasoline, uh, we need to think about safety in a different way. Through our group's research, we are studying how the design of systems are influencing the effect of loss of containment. And the goal of our research is to make applications like cars or ships and constructions like parking houses and tunnels safe to use for hydrogen. I'd like to show an example of our research into the effects of design on explosions. In these experiments, uh, hydrogen was released inside the container with obstacles. This picture shows the inside of the container where these pallets are simulating different types of equipment inside the room. Hydrogen was released inside and then ignited after letting it mix with air. Now let's see what happened. The amount of hydrogen release was 300 grams, and the explosion pressure was large enough to lift the container off ground. Even though the door was open, the explosion was quite severe. If we remove this obstacle inside the container and repeat the experiment, we can clearly see a huge difference. The container is now completely empty and the door is still open. It's not that easy to see what happened, was it? There is hardly any effect from the explosion. For the first experiment, the obstacles inside restrict the flow of gases out of the room and cause a stronger pressure buildup inside. This stronger pressure buildup will lead to a more severe explosion. Without the uh, obstacles, the gas can freely leave and there are nearly no effect of an explosion. 
This knowledge is important to make sure we can create a safe environment for hydrogen as a new fuel. We need to make sure that we understand the physical effects that control the consequences of an incident, so that we can make sure that the design of equipment and possibly surroundings is safe for people and society. And the devil really is in the details when designing safe systems for combustible gases, like hydrogen. You must always design an application or system by taking into account that unwanted leaks of hydrogen can happen. This can happen due to collisions, external fires, or failing equipment, other reasons. And the preferred design feature is, of course, as long as you can freely let hydrogen float away, smaller releases are not dangerous at all. But this might not be possible. If we need to have a room, like the container in the videos, it is critically important that we design these structures to be able to minimize the effects of incidents, like unwanted hydrogen releases. And like we saw in these videos, some obstacles inside the room will significantly increase the effect of an explosion, even though the door was open for the gas to leave. It was ventilated. So without the obstacles, there was hardly an explosion at all. To bring the knowledge we have gained through our research and new knowledge from future research is critical to introduce hydrogen into society in a safe manner. The world's goal should be to bring our energy production from fossil fuel to renewable sources, and hydrogen looks to be part of this transition, to bring a renewable fuel to the public. To gain public acceptance for the new fuels, a safe introduction is crucial. Technology development will have to include safe design of all parts of the value chain from production to consumer so that accidents will not happen and will not be a showstopper. Thank you.